Dit is Papa Alphanul Eko Tengo Eko voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Our weekend shows are in English. Today we start with the propagation bulletin of the RSGB. In addition to that, in the last half minute of the bulletin, we have another cartoon in SSTV. Hello, I'm Bob McCready, G0FGX, with the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS News from the Radio Society of Great Britain. Now the radio propagation report compiled by G0KYA, G4BAO and G3YLA on Friday the 15th of January. We've had another week of disturbed geomagnetic conditions with the K-index hitting 4 at times. This was due to an ongoing high-speed solar wind stream from a coronal hole on the Sun. As we predicted, the solar flux index remained in the range 100 to 110, bringing lacklustre HF performance at times. Next week looks like more of the same, I'm afraid, with the USAF predicting a solar flux index in the range 95 to 105. There are currently two sunspot groups visible on the Sun, but as they rotate out of view, the rest of the sun is looking fairly spotless at the moment. NOAA is predicting unsettled geomagnetic conditions on Thursday and Friday next week, with the K-index possibly hitting 4 again. Another model has a high-speed solar wind stream hitting the Earth on Monday or Tuesday. With such conflicting information, it's hard to predict HF conditions, but if the quieter geomagnetic state can last just a little longer and one model is wrong, we may get better ionospheric conditions for the upper HF bands, perhaps on 18 and 21 MHz at the beginning of the week. There have been some fleeting openings up to 28 MHz. The lower HF bands are still in the doldrums during the daytime, with 40 meters closing early to near vertical incidence radiation contacts around the UK. Luckily, 80 meters can and then take over. And now the VHF and up propagation news. After putting up with low pressure and flat conditions for some time, we now have real signs of high pressure returning to the charts. Weather models are showing high pressure building up in cold air, so we could be in for a prolonged period of quiet, settled weather with sharp frosts and some freezing fog. This means that there may be good low-level temperature inversions near the surface, as well as elevated inversions aloft due to the high pressure. This could produce good tropospheric openings, although stronger winds over Western Britain suggest that the better conditions will be in the east and over the North Sea into the near continent and southern Scandinavia. More 50 MHz sporadic E openings occurred last week, so it's still worth keeping a lookout mid-morning and at tea time for DX opportunities on an otherwise empty band. That said, once the high pressure moves in to cover a large part of Europe, it will remove the persistent strong jet stream, which has probably underpinned these recent winter ease events. Moon declination reaches maximum on Friday, so we have long moon windows this week, but with losses increasing as the week goes on. That's all for this week from the Propagation team. Electromagnetic Field EMF 2016 will take place from the 5th to the 7th of August near Guildford in Surrey. It's a UK camping festival for those with an inquisitive mind or an interest in making things, aimed at hackers, artists, geeks, crafters, scientists and engineers. The organisers are looking for talks and workshops for the festival and they're especially keen to hear from people with different backgrounds than those you'd normally expect to find at a technology conference. The London Hackspace Amateur Radio Club is planning to erect at least one of their Clark masts in the village, showcasing amateur radio on 3.5 MHz to 430 MHz and maybe higher. Further information is available online at emfcamp.org forward slash cfp. Emfcamp dot org forward slash cfp the UK Spectrum Policy Forum, the industry-led sounding board to government and Ofcom, has launched a new report called UK Spectrum Usage and Demand Second Edition. It was launched at the UK Spectrum Policy Forum conference with a keynote speech from Ed Vasey MP. Amateur radio features strongly in the report following input by the RSGB. See http colon forward slash forward slash tinyurl.com forward slash Z4KJ4JH. That's a heck of a URL, so I'll do it again. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash tinyurl.com forward slash Z4KJ4JH. The February-March 2016 edition of Radcom Basics will be emailed out to subscribers on Tuesday the 2nd of February, so there's plenty of time for new readers to sign up. It will contain features on making the most of tropospheric lifts on 2 metres, homemade coaxial traps for antennas, taking part in the Commonwealth contest on the 12th to the 13th of March, and making a 2 metre Slim Jim antenna with 300 ohm ribbon cable. You can find out more about Radcom Basics and subscribe in the publications section of the RSGB website, rsgb.com. 
www.sandringham.org. A 92-minute video containing the Sandringham School GB1 SAN and Tim Peak GB1 SS amateur radio contact is now available on the Aris UK team channel on YouTube. The contact took place on Friday the 8th of January and was led by Jessica M6LPJ. The video includes the presentations given to the students by Aris UK's Kieran M0XTD, head teacher Alan G4DJX and the chair of the RSGB Youth Committee Mike 2E0MLJ. Now the special event news. Rowan Hill Prep School will be running GB4 RHS on Friday the 22nd of January as part of a space and science fair. If you hear students passing greetings messages, please give them a call. GX0 MWT will be active for RNLI SOS Radio Weekend on the 23rd and 24th of January. Chelmsford ARS will be operating on HF and 144 MHz using SSB, Data and CW from 10am to 4pm each day from the Marconi Sailing Club at Steeple in Essex. GB2LBD will be on the air as part of SOS Radio Week on the 23rd through to the 30th of January. This one's operated by the Nunsfield House Amateur Radio Group in Derby. It's hoped to be operational on 40 metres and other HF bands depending on conditions along with some VHF depending on propagation and availability of aerials. The next commemorative events in the British Scientists Amateur Radio Award programme will be on the 21st of January to commemorate the work of biologist and mycologist Helen Gwynne Vaughan, born in 1879. Then on the 22nd and 23rd there will be a commemoration of Francis Bacon, born in 1561, and Robert Boyle, born in 1627. M0YBX and M0PHX will operate on the 21st and MX0YHA and MX0PHX on the 22nd and 23rd. These commemorations will be on the 40 metre band SSB and also on the higher bands if conditions permit. Als er een natuurramp gebeurt, vertrouw jij dan je leven toe aan het feit dat mobiele telefoons en internetverbindingen nog werken? Vertrouw je daar het leven van je gezinsleden aan toe? Ik dacht het niet. Amateurradio, communicatie die altijd blijft werken.